We're back here at VM World in Vegas. Now the scene where we were, Dave Vellante, my co-host uh, with uh, HP last uh, June. So take it away. Yeah, we were at uh, HP Discover, right? I think we're in the same building. And uh, we're here with David Scott, Senior Vice President of HP Storage. Welcome, David. Nice to see you, Dave. Nice to John. see you. Okay, good to Former CEO of, of 3PAR and um, and now going you know, head to head with the whales. So uh, how's it feel? It's great. Uh, you know, we, uh, we see a really exciting opportunity leveraging HP's converged infrastructure strategy, which I just heard Sonny from Cisco talking about. And uh, so what you think it's getting you great brand recognition <laughs> if, uh, if Cisco's talking about HP's strategy. Really <laughs> pleased to hear that. But uh, in storage, uh, we're going great guns. We, uh, we introduced back in the summer time frame our um, HP converged storage strategy, talking about storage without boundaries. And then last week, we followed that up actually making that a reality with the introduction of uh, HP Peer Motion, a storage federation technology that allows you to have kind of transparent online data mobility between either lots of three-pass systems or lots of less left-hand systems. So you can do you know, transparent workload balancing, lifecycle asset management, you know, improve your utilization efficiency and thin provisioning on a, a data center or metropolitan level rather than just in uh, David, a single system. David, just before we get into some of the, the meat and potatoes of the conversation, just talk about the performance of uh, ESSN. We talked to Mike Bannock yesterday, he said the business performance was fantastic. Just take us through the momentum that you guys have right now uh, on yeah, the business side. Well, I, I think what we're, we're seeing across the whole ESSN is a, a strategy where having adopted converged infrastructure, uh, as a, a guiding focus for both servers, storage, and networking uh, a couple of years ago. It's really coming to fruition and adding value to customers, and that's building our market momentum up. Uh, the HP networking team have been firing on all cylinders uh, after the 3Com acquisition and, and coming forward, and now with HP Storage, you're starting to see some of the same, kind of uh, that same leverage. Uh, uh, last quarter, we just uh, announced that uh, uh, both the HP 3PAR platform as well as the HP Store Once deduplication platform had triple digit growth rates. Uh, but more importantly, uh, in external disk storage, uh, we grew 17% year over year. So the momentum is starting to build. And you guys, obviously 3PAR was a big part of that injection. Um, and looking at in our research, you guys, and, and tracking you guys, HP had an offering kind of in there, and all of a sudden, boom, 3PAR comes in, you guys just expands the sales capacity. How's that going now? It's going really well because uh, you know our strategy has been to optimize people's ex existing traditional IT environments which have been based on established platforms like our P2000 MSA, the mid-range EVA platform, and the high-end uh, P9500 or XP platform. And, and we've been focused on kind of tech refreshes and new software that allows you know, conservative storage customers to, to continue on their path then at the same time, we're building out these new generations of storage solutions for virtualization, cloud, what we call big everything data environments with 3PAR left hand, our iBrix, you know, 16 petabyte scalable file system, uh, and with our store once deduplication technology, so that you know, our customers can have both best solutions in the old world as well as great solutions for the new cloud world. And we tie it all together with uh, a set of uh, converged uh, systems uh, solutions uh, that we announced recently and in fact uh, was our app systems for vertically integrated solutions for business intelligence, data warehousing, exchange, OLTP, our virtual systems which were all about uh, providing integrated solutions, a bit like uh, VBlocks but better, uh, best of breed components at every level uh, for virtualization VDI environments and then our unique cloud system offering uh, that basically allows people to get new private clouds up and running in less than 30 days. So just to clarify, that was triple digit growth of, you said, uh, store once and... And three par. Three par. Yeah, you, um, you, you published that in, in your earnings. There wasn't a lot of talk on the earnings call. The analysts wanted to talk about something else. We won't go there, but that's a pretty impressive uh, uh, growth rate. When you guys uh, were bought out by HP, you were roughly a $200 million company? Is that right? Uh, we were just over $200 so million two, run rate two, company. Two, 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 yeah. Run rate, okay. Yeah. And so we're talking about that plus some store once is pretty small, so you're, you're talking about a, a, at least a doubling, um, at least, yeah. based, based on the interpretation of that. So 
obviously you'll get to a billion dollars a lot faster with HP than you would have independently. And no. that's really where the leverage is paying off. I mean, we're getting uh, the benefit of HP's worldwide sales force, our tremendous channel uh, kind of partners who, the channel is becoming very excited about HP storage, our converged storage strategy, the opportunity to make money. Uh, and uh, so we're starting to see a lot of interest from people who may be hesitant about buying 20-year-old storage architectures from EMC. Well, but the obvious question there, I got to ask it, is that that, that growth, could, could you know, this question is, is it coming from EVA customers buying 3PAR, or is it coming from you know, legacy EMC? There's some, uh, there are some EVA customers, obviously, who are very happy to see a new platform with all of the functionality of, of 3PAR, and so we're seeing some of those customers choose 3PAR, but there's a lot of that growth that is really associated with competitive market share takeaways, and that's what, you know, we were growing our external disk storage 17% year over year. So, so what about the competition? So Dell, obviously has compellent, you know that, involved in that war, um, but they're bulking up and they're pushing hard, aggressive. How, is you, how do you guys look at Dell right now in terms of their approach? Well, you know, e equal logic and compellent are, are, are pretty much the same thing differentiated by a front-end protocol. You know, the positioning of it is, is difficult. One's got iSCSI, the other one's got fiber channel. It, it really doesn't do a lot of different things. So I, I think they have a lot of positioning challenges, whereas, you know, with our, uh, HP left-hand solutions, the P4000, we have solutions targeted in virtualization for, from a, a virtual SAN appliance that runs in a virtual machine uh, to our P4800 bladed solution that supports you know, small to medium-sized enterprises. And then at the other end of the spectrum, from the mid-range to the very high end, we have HP 3PAR. We think we have some of the best intellectual property in the storage industry right now. You, you mentioned uh, your new announcements. You had a new uh, uh, V-Class, I guess, right? Which essentially is going to replace the high end of the T-Class. Um, the federated storage uh, product that you guys announced, um, the peer-to-peer -peer piece, I want to talk about that a little bit. So by federated storage, we're talking about an autonomous set of resources that, that talk to each other. They, they're independent physical devices, but, but they create this, this pool within within a data center, right? Or within a, a synchronous distance. Right? That, that's right. It, rather than having to uh, kind of view storage as a single set of assets, you can now take, let's say, all of your HP 3PAR storage arrays and treat them as a single management entity from the perspective of data mobility. So you can transparently move workloads from one system, let's say a low-end F-class system, to a new V-class system, and that happens online transparently without having to add the overhead of virtualization appliances. If you look at all of the competitors out there, they have to add you know, appliances like EMC's in Vista, oh, was that, that was the one that went away. That that, the VPlex, sorry, VPlex, uh, or, or SVC. IBM's SVC, yeah. et cetera. And, and you have to add, buy that extra layer of cost and complexity, which also you have to administer, so it, it's more operating cost. Uh, and then you're adding a level in your architecture that, that really is a point of failure. So it's, it's impeding the resilience of your overall architecture. And peer-to-peer -peer federation, storage federation, with HP Peer Motion works exactly the same way as vMotion does in Compute Federation. vMotion is peer-to-peer -peer between you know, VMware virtual machines going to another server, and that's exactly how uh, the HP 3PAR peer motion works. So David, now one of the benefits of, of some of those other approaches though is they bring in heterogeneity, you do, you do not. That's not something that you're, you're attacking, is that right? Well, at, at this point in time, the actual core federation capability is, is clearly 3PAR systems or left-hand systems uh, uh, separated. 3PAR to 3PAR or left-hand to left-hand. Yes, maybe someday to But, but obviously there's, there's the opportunity for developing an on-ramp into that environment, and that on-ramp may start to include competitors' kind of solutions, you know, whether it be EMC, network appliance, IBM, uh, and of course, most of the customers are looking for the tremendous improvements in agility and efficiency that platforms like Left Hand and 3PAR can offer, and, and so uh, we see a very strong kind of opportunity for, for allowing customers to really incrementally get tremendous improvements in return on investment by thinning their legacy storage environments, moving to kind of a three-part platform. And if we can extend our storage federation peer motion capability to enable that migration, uh, it's going to make things much easier for customers to, to kind of go through that process. 
So last time we talked, you were at Carl and Chewbacca at uh, HP Discovery. You had your little meeting with Carl from VMware. What's happened since June, and what's going on in your world that uh, people haven't heard yet? Well, you know, we we just uh, uh, were talking about today how the world has changed with virtualization and cloud for the uh, in the way that you know, ten years ago, you'd have a five-year planning horizon. You know, five years ago, you know, it was a two-year planning horizon. Today, with you know, so much use of virtualization and cloud and self-service, your planning horizon has virtually vanished. And and so this issue is about how do you handle unpredictability that is associated with massive amounts of virtualization. And 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 so what we've been introducing are platforms, new platforms that solve that problem. The new P10,000 uh, three-part platform that we've just introduced is really the world's best platform for handling mixed, unpredictable workloads that may be heavily transactional or sequential. In real time, too. In real time, being able to non, having the agility to non-disruptively change quality of service levels to deliver autonomic storage tiering, and then now with peer motion, the expansion of of, of the. Uh, the capability to, to treat all of your assets in a metropolitan or data center level. So that's really been the major area of focus, but we've also introduced new uh, software for left hand. The same peer motion software is now out on the left hand platform, and we've just introduced integration, application integration for snapshots into virtual machine environments like VMware and, and Hyper-V. So it's been a, a busy time. <laughs> It's going to be a busy next six months, I can imagine, for you, yes. as you as you as you guys roll out all this good stuff. And and it is hyper. We heard you know Hurricane Irene. We were talking about that earlier. It's like it's kind of screwed everyone's plans up coming out here from the East Coast, and that's unpredictable. I mean, the cloud is a lot like that. So, uh, um, Dave, you have anything else? Yeah. So, um, well, I just wanted to thank you again for coming on the Cube. Um, you've been a great friend of ours, and uh, I love your perspectives, the vision. And uh, <laughs> congratulations on the integration. Looks like yes. it's going well. A lot of work to do, I'm sure. It's going uh, really well. Yeah. Very good. pleased. Good. Well, we, you know, the SSN, we've said Donatelli's business looks good. You guys are executing. I think converged infrastructure is really, okay. is really working out for HP as a strategy. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that, well, we had said there's, there's a two-horse race there, uh, uh, VCE and HP. Now, others have entered. I think NetApp is doing a good job there and, and, and has impressed us. You know, Oracle's doing its own thing. You know, and, yeah, and you know we're waiting for IBM's shoe to drop. That's probably got to happen here shortly. I mean, they've got to play in that. In that but I think I think the fundamental difference is that we've really committed to best of breed products at every level of the stack: servers, storage, networking, management, in an open environment. And if you look at our competitors, you either compromise on best of breed. You may have a few market lead, leading, long in the tooth products or you compromise on openness. And know, that's where know, HP's I advantage I told, is. I just told Tom Georgians when he was on, I said, Tom, you know, it's, to me it's like Democrats and Republicans, the similarities are greater than the differences, but okay, let's, <laughs> we, can, we can argue about nuance. Okay, we we're, we're Thank good. you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Scott with HP. Thanks. Up next